Good morning, and welcome to the FedCap Fiscal Year 2015 Operating and Financial Results Conference Call. All participants will be in listen-only mode. Should you need assistance, please signal a conference specialist by pressing the star key followed by zero. After today's presentation, there will be an opportunity to ask questions. To ask a question, you may press star, then one, on your telephone keypad. To withdraw your question, please press star, then two. Please note, this event is being recorded. I would now like to turn the conference over to Christine McMahon, CEO. Please go ahead. Thank you, Kate. And thank all of you on the line for your participation in this morning's call. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, know that this is a follow-up to our mid-year call in May when we released our six months results through March of 2015. We were joined in that call by over 100 people and received great feedback, including suggestions for improvements, which we have integrated into today's call. Our aim in these calls is to provide stakeholders with timely and relevant information on our mission-related activities and our financial health. The demands for timely and relevant data continue to increase, and we believe these calls are an effective and important piece of an overall engagement process, discussing not only metrics, as we will today, but also trends and challenges for the future. If you would turn to slide three, just a moment uh, on FedCap. FedCap is grounded in the belief that a sense of purpose, well-being, and dignity for all people can be achieved through work. We collaborate with businesses, funders, and other community partners to create opportunities for meaningful work for those who may face challenges. Our approach is threefold, to inspire individuals, to believe in the possibility for a better life, to promote the exchange of ideas, to advance the effectiveness of our systems of care, but perhaps the most important, our duty to change our own hearts and minds and ultimately to shift the larger belief system about what is possible for all people, despite barriers and perceived limitations. Led by an extraordinary and talented group of individuals, our work is driven through four main practice areas, economic development, workforce, education, and occupational health. Embedded in our structure, and integrated at the level of practice, these areas of impact drive a holistic approach. We see this as critical to fully achieving all that is possible for individuals and the communities where they live. A central concept fuels and guides our work, sustainable, relevant impact. A commitment to sustainability, a commitment that we must build and maintain an infrastructure that supports our goals to find lasting solutions for the people that we serve, not just while they're with us, but long after they leave us. A commitment to relevance is a commitment to continuous improvement and forward movement, a commitment to innovation and always asking what's next. And finally, a commitment to measurable and meaningful impact, which includes looking at real life outcomes for people we serve and to ensure that our work results in increased capacity for our communities and to, that it supports outcomes in the lives of their members. On slide four, as we move into the details of our 2015 results, know that they are tied to overall strategy, achieving leading industry standards for measurable outcomes, replicating demonstrated successes across our expanded footprint, and re-engineering successful models of care tailored to advance outcomes of specialty populations. Working within our areas of practice, we've developed an important capacity building framework to transform systems of care, and we are having an impact. We are using technology more and more, not only to support our infrastructure, but to reach, engage, and inform stakeholders, including consumers of our service. And finally, since 2011, we continue to combine with like-minded organizations to advance this work. Through these partnerships and combinations, and guided again by the goal of sustainable, relevant impact, we can strengthen and amplify our own work and the work of others and extend capacity and relevant change. Let's look at some of our operating highlights on slide six. 7,627 people have been placed in competitive and integrated jobs this year. Over 3,100 students have advanced or completed educational milestones, advanced to grade level, or matriculated into college. 
Since our last call, when we reported that we formally launched our National Center for Innovation, we have provided services to over 3,100 people. We expect to exponentially expand our impact through capacity building and consultation. And almost 68,000 people walked through our doors this year, receiving a full range of services from assessments and evaluations to education, tutoring, and job placement. On slide seven, I want to point to some important developments and updates from our last call. In our last call, we signaled that all parties had approved the acquisition of East Fields. On September 1st, we completed that acquisition, and the transition is well underway. We call Easter Seals New York as approximately $30 million in revenues and affects the lives of over 10,000 people across the state. During our May call, we announced that HRA was reassigning a contract to FedCap, representing over $82 million over the next two years. This award was related to a situation in which a large community provider filed for bankruptcy. That, trans that transition is now complete, and it needs to be said that New York City's Human Resource Administration, HRA, and the FedCap team combined transitioned a very large and complex program with little to no adverse effects or interruptions for consumers. To date, we have achieved and in many cases exceeded performance outcomes. In total, for 2015, we placed over 2,300 people in competitive jobs, but importantly, since the reassignment of the HRA contract, we are up nearly 50% in job placements over this time last year in Region 1. This was a very successful transition by any standard, and we continue to monitor the effects of this assignment and look forward to continued success. With, it, with expert assistance from Studley, we reported last time about several major real estate transactions. These transactions support our long-term strategy and are intended to significantly improve the corporate health of our agency by creating a modern, state-of-the-art campus-like setting that can accommodate a range of essential services, including our career design school, services to veterans, and many other population-specific constituents. And it also created an opportunity to set aside a significant portion of the proceeds for long-term savings. Our National Center for Innovation is up and running and very active. We expect to exponentially expand our impact through capacity building and consultation. This work is focused on building capacity in communities, ensuring that they have what it needs for people with disabilities and special needs to achieve integrated and meaningful community-based opportunities to live, learn, play, and work. Among the important activities in the Center for Innovation, we are looking at how to develop and expand employment opportunities for people with intellectual impairments. We have great leadership in our partners at Ability One and the many state set-aside programs like NYSED in New York and Access New Jersey, combined with vocational rehabilitation, school districts, businesses, and other key partners. Together, we can create a future where there is a place for people with all abilities as contributing members of our society, a project worth all our efforts. Our second Hilton Award, this one for $1.6 million, is focused on advancing the lives of children in our foster care systems. Right now, under 10% of those young people enter college, and even worse, less than 2% of those who enter complete. This next year, with this award, we intend to reach over 4,000 foster parents in New York City and Los Angeles. And if this initial demonstration project is successful, our aim is to expand it systems wide, affecting the outcomes of over 30,000 children who leave foster care each year. We believe that this program can change the story for these young people to a story of optimism and great promise. We can really change lives in sustainable ways. Slide eight represents our current mix of revenue by practice. We are continuing to create a more diversified portfolio. Over the next several years, we intend for this mix to continue to diversify and to expand the payer mix within it as well. The combination with Easter Seals will add significantly to our diversification. On slide nine, we are taking a deeper dive into one of the larger the largest of the practice areas representing economic development. Four operations currently make up that scope of work with customers from government, not-for-profit, and commercial sectors, and also anchored by Ability One, NYSED, and Access New Jersey partners. These businesses created meaningful employment opportunities for over 1,600 people with barriers this past year. Each of these operations live in a competitive bidding environment, and we are fortunate to have extraordinary talent leading these areas. 
Total Facilities Management, the largest of the operations, has over 18 million square feet under management, including the iconic locations uh, such as the Statue of Liberty and commercial customers such as GEICO. In our manufacturing operation, we produce military-grade life safety devices, primarily for the government, and within the Department of Defense, our capability is sophisticated, and we believe we can be competitive. We are extremely proud to be manufacturing a product for the Department of Defense, an emergency beacon, part of, this basic, part of the basic package uh, of emergency equipment that each service member is carrying in combat. Our business solutions effort, a business-to-business back-office set of services, from document imaging and management, print and bulk mail, to a comprehensive staffing service. Our customers span across a wide range of sectors. And finally, home health care, where over 350 well-trained, dedicated home health providers provide critically important services to homebound individuals across New York City. This dedicated workforce serves over 2,600 individuals, and we expect, given the demographics of our communities, that this program will continue to expand. In 2016, we will continue to pursue more balance within the business areas, and our pipeline is heavily focused on additional commercial work. Slide 10 reflects key activities in our workforce and education and occupational health practice areas. We have provided relevant and needed assessment and evaluation services to children and adults, veterans, people living in homeless shelters, and children in special education programs, and many more, with the goal to understand their strengths, interests, and challenges, hoping to help them transition to meaningful work. And these efforts have been successful. We've put over 7,600 people to work. This past quarter, we celebrated 10-year anniversary of Reserve, gathering nearly 200 businesses, professionals, academics, policymakers, and government and private funders to celebrate this milestone. jobs. People with, sustains, with substance abuse disorders are gaining essential training and education op opportunities and combined with effective treatment, obtaining meaningful work in a wide range of fields. Our work in developing recovery centers will provide much needed long-term support to allow them to sustain their sobriety and their jobs. ESOCILS will bring strategic and complementary qualifications and talent to this area. With that, a more comprehensive look at Easter Seals on slide 11. Easter Seals was founded in 1919 in Ohio, and today Easter Seals New York is part of a network of over 79 affiliate organizations with well over 550 locations across the country, as well as a growing international presence. Easter Seals New York expands our reach, in particular within education and occupational health in New York City and upstate New York with services from New York City to Albany to Buffalo. Easter Seals has a long-standing and powerful national role in serving our veterans through advocacy and education, employment and rehabilitation, assisting not only the veteran, but his or her family. Easter Seals also enhances our reach in that it provides early intervention and education services within its Make the First Five Count effort, ensuring children from birth to five, including children with autism and other disabilities, have what they need to, be, to fully benefit from, a, from public education and go on to lead productive, meaningful, integrated lives. This work is supported by a loyal and remarkable group of donors and supporters. I would now like to turn the presentation over uh, to our Chief finance, Financial Officer, Karen Wegman, who will review more detailed final met, financial metrics. Thank you, Christine. I'm pleased to present to the audience our financial report for our full year results for the fiscal year ended September 30th, 2015. If you'll turn your attention to slide 13, before going into the specifics of the financials, I'd like to give you an overview of our financial results for this past year. Our year-over-year -year operating revenue grew by 23.7%. Thus, our services expanded over $33 million in operations from fiscal 2014. Although our financial statement shows a growth rate of 5.4%, 
This is based upon the fact that in 2014, our revenue included the gain on the sale of our headquarter building of $24.5 million. So let's look at this significant operating growth rate of over 23%. It is marked by several items. The New York City We Care contract for Region, region 1, covering Manhattan and the Bronx, started April 1, 2015. Six months of these operations accounted for roughly 15 million of our growth of 33. The combination with Easter Seals New York that Christina discussed with you became effective September 1, 2015, and brings one month of operations into our current fiscal year results of 2.7 million. As Christine mentioned for the second time, FedCap was awarded a $1.6 million grant from the Hilton Foundation. And lastly, our organic growth, predominantly in our economic development line of business, the mainstay of FedCap, received increases in total facility management contracts, such as the annualized value of the FAA Tower Atlantic City contract that we presented to you at our six-month results, and new contracts with Hudson River Park Trust, Siemens, and BOCES, as well as the expansion of our 225 Cadman Plaza contract. In addition, these total facility management contracts are encompassing and co cover multiple years. Thus, renewals of these multi-year contracts contributed to our growth as well. Overall, economic development contributed $14 million, a 16% growth within this line of business. Secondly, our program expenses account for 88% of our operating, total operating expenses. This is in line with our 2014 level. Total expenses in 2015 were $173.7 million. The, the, spending, the majority of the spending on programs and services, not included in the 88%, are necessary investments we make, expenditures on research and development, our investment in our infrastructure, as well as program-related expertise costs that we see an investment that sets set FedCap apart as an industry leader, such as our solution series. Again, the income statement for the fiscal year 2015 will include one month of operational contribution from Easter Seals New York acquisition. This amount is just over $2.7 million. In addition, our balance sheet at 9.30.15 will reflect the asset acquisition, showing as if Easter Seals New York is part of the company for the entire year. The total assets brought on through the Easter Seals acquisition is $14.2 million. Turning to slide 14, a, sh a snapshot of our total revenue from 2011 through 2015, with compound annual growth rate of 19%. Each and every year is marked by organic growth, and every year is also inclusive of an acquisition. In our top line revenue, we have consistently grown each year through these two combinations. With each party, in, in terms of the acquisitions, each party is achieving similar goals of financial stability while continuing to advance and expand services. On slide 15, we show a comparative of our revenue diversification, one of our strategic goals. In fiscal 2015, our revenue was $173.9 million. Five years before, in fiscal 2010, our total revenue was $73.5 million. It's notable that in 2010, economic development accounted for 93% of our operations, with over $68 million in services delivery. While in 2015, economic development, now achieving over $100 million of operations, represents 59% of our total company. Our education and occupational health is now 8% of our operations, so over $13 million in 2015. In 2010, the occupation, education and occupational health division represented 6%, or just $4 million, clearly showing growth and diversification. But most notable is our workforce development, which in 2015 exceeds $50 million in operations, or 29% of our total revenue, while in 2010, it was non-existent. On slide 16, we look at the FedCap balance sheet. As of September 30th, 2015, FedCap has cash and investments exceeding $29 million. This is a growth of $5.2 million since 2014. It's represented 
significantly by the gain on the sale from our property of over 15 million, as well as, a ca as, well as cash of over 14 million. Our total assets now exceed 142 million, a growth of 31 million from 2014. This growth of 31 million is predominantly attributed to an increase in our accounts to total accounts receivable, well in line with our growth of revenue, and an increase in fixed assets with 7.4 million of 10 million contributed by the merger with East Seals New York, and the balance being FedCap's con continued capital expansion. Long-term debt is now 76.1 million, a growth of 16.7 million over the 2014 year. The 10.2 10 million of this is brought on through Easter Seals New York, through the bonds and mortgages that ex exist on the owned properties, as well as a working capital line of credit of $2.5 million. And lastly, the net assets of FedCap are $34.9 million. Thus, we continue to strengthen our base as well as expand our services. On slide 17, we look at some of the key financial ratios. In our operating statement, our operating margin is 0.1%, very characteristic of a not-for-profit. We continue to manage our financial operations for an overall balanced position of revenue and expenses at year-end. Thus, this year we will have a slight surplus reported of just over 179,000. 57% of our expenses, of our operating expenses, are attributable to personal services. This percentage is consistent with prior years. In 2015, personal service costs for FedCap exceeded $98 million, of which 71% of this expense is for our consumers that we employ. Looking to the balance sheet, a much-watched ratio is our debt coverage ratio. This exceeds 4.4 four, four, four this year. This is one of the ratios that our lenders consider, and it is a ratio that we're pleased to uh, report is in compliance. Measures, it measures our ability to make current payments on our debt. The debt to total asset, 75%, includes both current and long term, and, it, and shows the, the percentage relative to our total assets, which exceeded $142 million this year. Again, a positive number. Our current ratio, which is our working capital ratio, is also good, and shows our capability to meet short-term obligations necessary to run our organization. And finally, our DSO days, 51 days. This is well within acceptable parameters to, for the businesses we work within, and we're continually looking for ways to improve this. So thus, we can increase our cash flow as well as gain efficiencies with our use of capital. And now, I would like to turn the presentation back to Christine McMahon, our Chief Executive Officer. Thank you, Karen. And before we conclude the presentation and open uh, for questions and answers, I want to take a moment to review the significant impact of an essential component of our strategy. That's the combinations on slide 18. This, the significance of these acquisitions over the last five years, clearly reflected in the numbers, has advanced our impact and corporate health. Wildcat has enhanced our profile considerably in the community and was really our entry into the workforce sector, which as you can see has grown significantly. Reserve an important transition to serving an older worker population, an area with national and international relevance. The footprint of Reserve expands from New York to Florida to Los Angeles and is making a $21 million impact in local economies. Community Work Services, an organization founded well over 100 years ago, is a key part of our planned expansion in New England. Its staff and board is the hub of critically important poverty-fighting work. And most recently, Easter Seals provides a high quality and highly visible brand dedicated to serving our communities and the most valuable, vulnerable among us. These acquisitions have been transformational for all of us combined. We are so much more, so much better. We have clearly enhanced and leveraged qualifications and capabilities across the whole spectrum of our shared practice. We have gained a proven track record a large and involved stakeholder community, and most notably, we have gained tremendous talent in our leaders, board members, senior management, significant staff strength, expertise, and relationships throughout all the organizations. A combined group of stakeholders, mutually leveraged infrastructure and systems, all laser focused on advancing our overarching mission, clear goals, gives us, and all of us, 
a tremendous game-changing potential. Indeed, we can change the world in ways that matter for real people who have real lives and who will have the opportunity to take their place in families and within their communities. Together, we, we ensure that people with barriers have every opportunity to live a rich and full life, to learn, to play, to work as contributing members of our society. On slide 19, looking ahead, we are all positioned for continued growth and relevant, sustainable impact. We continue to advance the work of our practice areas by innovating, advancing relevant service deliveries, and capacity building. And as Karen's report details, we are focused on our sustainable financial health. And we see Easter Seals as contributing to this effort over the next year. Along with the growth of our family of brands, we expect a run rate to exceed 200 million this next fiscal year. We benefit from strong engagement among all stakeholders, and in particular, the boards of directors of our combined agencies, and of course, our FedCap board of directors. And finally, talent. We are making considerable investments here, our leadership academy, our infrastructure, and, and creating a culture where our, where our employees seek excellence. Our staff truly aspire to greatness. We are lucky to have such a dedicated and effective group. I would like to turn the call uh, over to the operator to facilitate the questions. We will now begin the question and answer session. To ask a question, you may press star then one on your touchtone phone. If you are using a speaker phone, please pick up your handset before pressing the keys. To withdraw your question, please press star then two. At this time, we will pause momentarily to assemble our roster. The first question comes from Christine Andres of USI Insurance Services. Please go ahead. So I have a three-part question, if I may. I, part one is, where do you stand with respect to the integration of Easter Seals New York? And then, uh, have you begun to cross-sell of qual the cross-sell of qualifications and services yet? And then, which areas do you consider the most promising? Oh, great question. Um, and I'll make sure I, I capture all, all of it. Um, we, we, we are already operationally integrated, so this, this transition with the help of, of Easter Seals New Hampshire, from whom we transitioned, uh, working cooperatively with our team, we have successfully uh, transitioned um, much of the operation. We are proceeding now with what we consider step two, which is sort of an integration effort, and uh, this will continue on for the next several months to ensure that um, all critical uh, components of the organization are fully integrated and that we're fully leveraging uh, the power of the combined organization. We have a senior vice president serving as the executive director of Easter Seals New York, and um, there are over 800 employees uh, uh, working within the Easter Seals Corporation. And indeed, we have leveraged and integrated these employees uh, within uh, the family of employees to expand uh, a couple of key projects even within the first several months. For example, we expanded some document imaging contracts in our business uh, solutions uh, in Rochester, New York. An integrated team of writers developed a winning proposal in the Rochester area, expanding our preschool in uh, Rochester, uh, winning a million dollar contract there. And uh, we are also fully uh, focused on uh, expanding veteran services throughout the state and, and both teams working uh, collaboratively to, to get that done. So, so the, the, the areas for the future, most promising areas in, in the future, really are focused on uh, preschool expansion, veterans services expansion uh, in this next fiscal year. Thank you. The next question comes from Paula Park of Bank United. Please go ahead. Hi, I also have some questions on Easter Seal. So I guess first is, um, what's the financial relationship with Easter Seals and the national headquarters? And are there activities that the national organization is not going to permit Easter Seals to engage in? And um, you guys have done a great job, you know, merging and consolidating with other organizations over the years. Are, are there plans to continue that strategy? 
uh, a great question. Easter Seals New York is is part of a national uh, affiliate based organization. Um, there, as I mentioned, about 79 of them uh, loosely associated through a membership agreement and and some shared values and program initiatives. Um, there they there are no limitations to to services that we might provide under the Easter Seals brand. However, there are key strategic uh, programs that we should provide, including, as I, uh, among them I mentioned earlier, the, the Ready by Five, certainly services to veterans. Easter Seals nationally is among the largest providers of employment services for people with disabilities, uh, consistent with FedCap's work as well. And also, uh, as an aside, FedCap combined nationally also uh, offers uh, the largest set of services to people looking for adapted recreational activities, sort of outside the scope of, of FedCap, but indeed a relevant component of uh, their work. We expect that um, not much will change within the current suite of services at Easter Seals in New York outside of expansion, so they will continue with the services they're currently providing, and we intend to leverage the expertise across our family of brands to strengthen and improve services to veterans, uh, to people uh, with autism, both at the school age level, but also those transitioning out of school and into community-based and integrated employment. Great, thank you. The next question comes from Paul Carini of NYSID. Please go ahead. Thank you. Good morning. Can you give us a sense of the size and scope of your services for veterans? Uh, yes. As you know, um, FedCap and Easter Seals both committed to serving uh, not only veterans but their families. We provided services collectively to well over 1,000 veterans uh, this past year, and uh, including all of our brands. Uh, we provide services to homeless veterans, uh, men and women, employment services, employment training. Uh, for example, we qualify to receive the GI Bill through our career design school, an array of work readiness, career exploration, job placement, post-employment support. And I will point out that our partners, not so, so FedCap and its brand, a family of brands, uh, heavily uh, focused on veterans, but also our partners, such as Ability One, NICID, Access New Jersey, Voc Rehab, and a number of other community-based partners, along with the many, many businesses uh, with which we are, with whom we are affiliated, all um, leveraged in support of veterans' well-being and their families. So that will be a, a looking out at 2016, a fairly um, coordinated effort to really bring much more relevance to that topic area. So thanks for that question. The next question comes from Jennifer Rosalind of J.P. Morgan Chase. Please go ahead. Great. Thank you. Hi, Christine, Karen. Uh, great presentation. Uh, just curious, is FedCap, have you found the only not-for-profit that discloses its operating milestones and financials in this type of form? And do you expect over time other not-for-profits will begin to do the same? You know, we have searched high and low. And so while we can't be certain we've, we've hit every major area, uh, we can find no example of a, a not-for-profit disclosing uh, both impact and financial uh, in, 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 the, in this format, uh, and certainly within the time frame uh, that we are providing this. So we do hope that others will join in, in doing so. Uh, the Chronicle for Philanthropy uh, cited, uh, commented on this practice not too long ago. FedCap was mentioned, and again, um, no other organization was mentioned. But we are very, very hopeful that this could catch on. Great. Okay. Thank you. The next question comes from Moira, Moira Patterson of Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Good morning. Can you talk a little bit about what you consider to be the greatest risks to growing FedCap's business in 2016? Yes. In fact, uh, you know, risk, uh, risk management is one of our large strategic initiatives, uh, not because we believe we're in particularly high-risk 
uh, business or sector, but because uh, you know, lots of lives are depending on management's ability to forecast and, and predict and strengthen and mitigate against uh, sometimes risks that uh, are externally driven, risks associated with policy changes or regulatory changes. And so there are a number of areas on our radar that we are watching very, very closely. Uh, in addition to some of the internal uh, risk factors, typically from an agency this size, obviously, and you heard from Karen's report that cash management and our ability to grow in uh, as rapidly as we need to, but also responsibly uh, in a way that um, provides financial uh, stability to our organization, and, and external pressures that have been emerging over this past year, and we see them as uh, getting stronger, not, not less so in 2016, and that is some of the pressures uh, faced by our uh, federal uh, programs. There's uh, some policy and regulatory changes emerging in connection with work. We also have movements across the entire nation uh, in connection to um, uh, Health Affordable Care Act and the implications that that will have on our long-term uh, funding. So these are areas we're watching very, very closely. And uh, unfortunately, there are a number of changes uh, and, and risk factors in the environment um, in, these, in these times, certainly in this sector, but, but perhaps across sectors. And the good news is we are committed to, to sort of embracing the, the risk factors in ways that, that I think are far more healthy uh, and, and looking to mitigate head on. And so uh, we have a fairly effective risk management program in place to do just that. Great, thank you. Again, if you have a question, please press star then one. The next question comes from Howard Siegel of Irwin Siegel Agency. Please go ahead. Good morning, Christine and Karen. Very informative presentation, thank you. My question is really about FedCap and its growth. Are you in a competitive environment or does the need for services far outweigh the supply? Ah, uh, the I would say the bulk, if not all, of our services um, are, are in a competitive environment, and there are um, several ways uh, we, we are in this environment. Um, among them, of course, are um, in, when we pursue commercial uh, business within our four areas, indeed, uh, that is uh, highly competitive. Uh, but second to that, m most of the federal, state, and local contracts and opportunities to provide services are through competitive bidding processes. And then in other areas where we have um, standing services such as our education services, in these ways we have to uh, compete for uh, the, the consumer's choice. And so consumers have a significant amount of choice about where they're going to receive their services and how, and we stand um, to to, to meet their needs and, and have to do so and earn their trust uh, every day. And we, we welcome that environment, by the way, and feel as though our uh, commitment to excellence uh, serves us well. Great. Thank you. And the next question comes from Rochelle Powell of Prager & Company. Please go ahead. Hi, Christine. Um, first, I want to congratulate you and your team for a, another very, very successful year. And just going back to the, the comment about being competitive, we do, you know, we do a lot of not-for-profit financings, and the, the, the word on the street is that FedCap is definitely the go-to agency. So congratulations on that. Um, I do want to go back to um, you know, some questions on We Care One. And uh, it's 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 a huge contract. It's about eighty two million dollars. And I have uh, you know, just a couple of questions on that. Are you concerned um, that you have so much exposure to to the We Care contracts? That's uh, one question. And um, have you succeeded in reaching you know the milestones that are contained within the contracts? And have are you performing? up to the required objectives. And also the last one, which is really important, is FedCap being paid on time on both of the We, we Care contracts. Uh, great, great set of questions. And you're, you're right. We Care is a large um, project 
uh, funded by the Human Resource Administration here in New York City. And to the extent that uh, I'm extremely happy to, to say that we are performing uh, very, very well, and we expect to continue performing very, very well uh, in, this, in this area. We, have, uh, we are paid through five different kinds of milestones, from wellness to readiness to placement uh, and, and alike. And in, in all areas, uh, most areas, we are meeting or exceeding uh, the, the, the standard in these areas. The, the transition, uh, in fact, was uh, a large uh, challenge, but met with great uh, results. As I, as I mentioned during the presentation, over 260 staff uh, support this uh, program that was transitioned, and um, they did an extraordinary job in, in making a smooth transition for the consumers. Uh, we, as I mentioned, we're exceeding all contract expectations, and um, we expect to continue to, to exceed those expectations in the future. So in terms of too much exposure with this contract, we're very, very um, optimistic and excited about our performance so far and feel as though we will continue to meet and exceed all of the performance-based outcomes. Uh, as to the payment, uh, the city has worked with us uh, like true partners. We have been able to um, process uh, bills and, and receive payment in timely in a timely manner. Uh, all indications is that uh, Human Resource Administration, their personnel, are dedicated to ensuring uh, the well-being of these uh, individuals who participate in this program and, and their long-term sustainable well-being and recognize that uh, a partnership with uh, FedCap is part of that recipe, and we are uh, extraordinarily grateful for their um, dedication and commitment to both the population and our infrastructure. So it's been all around a great uh, relationship. Thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Christine McMahon for closing remarks. Thank you, and I just want to thank all of you uh, for participating today. We look forward to keeping you up to date on our progress, uh, and so thanks, and I hope that this is a, an effective uh